Hello, Blake Crudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm going to show you how to use the dust and scratches filter, of all things, a filter that nobody's probably used in the last three decades. I'm going to teach you how to use this filter to fix broken pixel color noise that you'll see in your Milky Way photographs. This is the before. You see these broken pixels here? This is the after. Now we're going to fix this, and we're not going to get any sacrifice in detail through noise reduction. It all happens in one layer in Photoshop. All right, let's do this. All right, so I was recently editing this image of the Milky Way here over a one-room schoolhouse just outside of where I live in the Tallgrass National Preserve in Kansas. And what I noticed was I was starting to get these kind of broken pixel looking things that are happening down here, this red and green and uh, blue pixelation that's happening here that's not normal. And that's coming out because if I, you know, as I increase my shadow adjustment here so I can get more of that foreground area, it comes at the cost of noise. It's always going to come at the cost of noise when we're processing a Milky Way photo, but these little um, blue broken pixels and red and green bro broken pixels can be fixed. Now, traditionally, you'd want to go over here into your noise reduction and you know reduce your noise anyway. I'd usually go with maybe a 25 to a 30 in my luminance and keep my luminance detail at about 50. Uh, it's pretty much my, my usual noise reduction here. And then I come into my color noise and I'll increase the color noise in order to start to get rid of those. But those pesky little bastards are not going away. So if I increase my, decrease my color detail to try and get those things to go away, maybe increase my color smoothness, you're going to see that this is going to look really hideous. Because what it's doing is it's just blurring the junk out of my photo. If I zoom out, it's blurring the whole photo. It almost looks like it should be like a painting rather than uh, a photo. And I don't want that. So I'm going to zoom back down here. And I'm going to decrease my color decrease my color noise. So bring this to about 20 and then I'll put these at about 50 and 50. Okay. So with those settings, I should be good to go. It'll get me back to a point where I still have the color noise. This is something that I just can't do in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom and you can see these little spots are everywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. Once we're here in Photoshop, I'll go ahead and zoom in on these bad boys so you can see them. Okay. Now the, the idea here that you might be thinking I'm going to go with is to use some cloning methods, like maybe the clone stamp tool or even easier. Let's try the healing brush. Sweet. The healing brush works. But you realize that I have to go through this entire photograph trying to fix all of these little spots. And they are everywhere, all over this photo. So is there an easier way to do this? Yes. Let me go back to where it says open here. Keep this like this so you can see these colored dust spots. I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate this background layer. And I'll even call this Clean Up. Okay? Clean up. Oh, <laughs> basically what these are is uh, as your sensor is recording an image, the noise is a random pattern. So if you had two photos that are exactly like this, these little broken pixel looking things are going to be in different spots. That's because of uh, the random way that your sensor gathers light. It never captures this, that noise the same way twice. So um, now with this, with this on its own layer, I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to noise. And I'm going to go to dust and scratches of all things. I mean, it's a it's an interesting little filter, this dust and scratches filter. Um, the default here, if we default this out, the radius is set to one pixel, and it's already doing a good job of helping us here. And the threshold is set to zero. If we increase the radius, you'll see that this is going to really blur the image quite a bit. We don't want to go that blurry. We definitely want to maintain some detail here. And you think, well, why don't you just use like the Gaussian blur, Blake? Well, you know, Gaussian blur and some of the other blurs take quite a bit of time. Whereas this dust and scratches things, it, it works extremely fast because all it's doing is it's looking at the pixels that are around it and it's saying, okay, Hey, you, I need you to look like me. Boom. And it just combines them together so that they all look alike. That's essentially what it's doing. Whereas a blur, it's doing a lot more to the pixels to make them look as if they've got a natural blur blend. Whereas this is just saying, Hey, pixels near me, look like me, pixel near me, look like me, pixel near me, look like me. And it keeps doing that over and over again until all the pixels started to look like one another within the radius that you select. So if I select a radius that's extremely high, like 82, it's basically saying every pixel in an 82 radius is going to start looking the same. We don't want it that high. Even something at like just three pixels, that even starts to help. See that? Those dust speckles go away after three pixels. So I wouldn't push this all the way up to 500 just because you can, okay? I would keep this somewhere at around the... 
three to five range just until those pixels start to disappear. You might be thinking, well, what, what's this threshold thing? Well, the threshold is going to restrict how much uh, is coming through. But as we bring these levels up, we can start to create some problems with these thresholds. If you see right here, uh, that when we increase the threshold, basically what happens is um, it, it if you ever use a threshold adjustment layer, it makes these blotchy, inky type of things. So just keep the threshold set to zero. If you want, you can set the threshold to one just to put some type of protection in there. But the main thing here is the radius and we'll press OK. Now I'm going to zoom out here and show you the whole image. And you're going to think, Blake, why on earth would you do this? The whole image looks like a painting. And look, you lost your stars. <laughs> your stars are not dust and scratches that we're trying to get rid of. Well, the thing about this is that we're going to use a very specific blend mode that's really going to help us out here and it will get our stars back. The blend mode that we want to use on this is the color blend mode, because what the color blend mode says, it says, okay, I like the colors that are in this image, apply the colors in this image to the image below or all the underlying layers below, and then let the underlying layers tonal values shine through. So that's why we still have tonal detail and tonal data that's happening in the background layer. But magically, all of our pixels, our broken color pixels there are gone even better than what they would look like if we tried to clone out every single one of them. Because what happened here? Well, if we zoom in at the pixel level, let's zoom in all the way down to the pixel level here, and we turn this off. You see that noise that we had, that problem that we had there? We basically said, okay, you right here, all the pixels around you in a three pixel radius, I need you to start looking like me. And that's what they did. They blended together. And then what did we do? We borrowed the color from it. And that's all we did. That's the only difference there. If we zoom into the back now, we get our stars back. Look at that. Now we might lose some of the colors that we get around our stars, which are kind of nice in the night sky. If you don't want the color noise around the stars, well, hey, leave it off of there. But if you do want that color that comes around those stars, which gives us quite a bit of variation in the night sky, all you need to do here is make a selection for the foreground. So I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and just quickly go over the foreground area. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that is fine. And then pop a mask on there. And what that does is it says, okay, now this area in white is going to receive that color pixel fixer, the color pixel fixer. It's a very fancy term and the sky is not going to get the color pixel fixer. <laughs> okay. So the dust and scratches a filter that probably hasn't been used in three decades actually has a very valuable place in night sky and Milky Way photography. Now this tip that I just shared with you comes from a new course that I created called a beginner's guide to Milky Way photography. In this course, I tell you all the things you need to know about planning to capture the Milky Way, capturing the Milky Way, what gear you need uh, and how to post process that stuff. Even down to all the apps that I use in my phone that help me build a solid bulletproof plan for capturing the Milky Way. One of the things I include in there is an action in that action is exactly what I just showed you here. So if you're interested in that course, go ahead and click the card up above or look in the description or look somewhere around this video for a button that will take you to that course. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, share it and tell a friend. Uh, I'd love to hear some other strategies you have for combating color noise in your Milky Way photos. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.